What's the difference between trading and investing? If you're new to crypto and you've just entered this space, you're probably wondering what are the difference and how do I get started? I just want to spend some time talking about this. I don't think a lot of people cover off the differences. And look, for a beginner, it's confusing, right? For somebody who's been in the space for a long time, it's very clear. You know what you're doing and on you go. You go to the advanced metrics and you're off and away. But what about the new person? The new person that enters crypto have thought, hang on, I want to buy a little bit of Bitcoin, but how do I take it to the next level? How do I start my journey towards becoming a professional investor and trader? And what's the difference between them? Which one do I want to do? Do I need to do both of them? Do I need to pick one of them? How do I pick? we got to get into that. So the first thing we need to understand is that the difference between a trader and an investor from a holistic perspective is very different. So a trader is, and you got to hear me out here, is no different to a person who has a job. When you're trading, you're spending time on your computer making trades, right? I'm buying a crypto, I'm going to sell a crypto, and I'm going to make some profit. You're spending time to make money. OK, so it's no different to a job. Now, of course, it's a very good job. People can spend literally 10, 15, 20 minutes a day and make more than people can make in months or all year if they're a very good trader. But it's very difficult to become a good trader. And it takes a lot of time, a lot of patience, a lot of trial and error to start becoming a, uh, a profitable trader consistently. And that's the key. You can become profitable in a random trade. But how do you do it consistently over time so that you can build wealth sustainably as a trader? Now, an investor, I believe anybody can become, right? An investor is somebody that believes in an asset, whatever that asset is, right? You could be a real estate investor. You could be a stock investor. You could be a bond investor or a commodity investor. And similarly for crypto, you could become a crypto investor. And in order to become an investor, you need to have a thesis, right? You need to believe why are you investing in something and why is it undervalued today versus later on? And normally, an investor has a longer time frame horizon. They have a longer horizon, right? They want to buy a crypto. Let's say they want to buy Bitcoin today. And they just fundamentally believe for all the different narratives and their conviction level that within one, two, three, four, ten years time, it's going to be worth far more than what they invested today. And that is long term wealth building. So trading is like a fast job. It's like a it's like a supercharged job where you can spend an hour today. You can make good returns, but it's a job. It relies on you spending time. But investor doesn't need to spend time. They just park money. They wait time. They don't spend time. They wait time. And then their money should have grown over time. So that's fundamentally the difference. Now, we're going to come on to. Um, you know, whether you should do one or the other, but we need to understand then what is a trader. So within trading, this way it gets a little bit complicated. You have a few different types of trader. You have a position trader. Okay. Now a position trader is somebody who can leave their trades for months. Okay. So this is where people get confused. Is that not an investor? Well, the difference is an investor has long-term conviction. A trader doesn't necessarily care about what they're trading in. They might not even believe in what that project's trying to achieve. They could be trading it for a technical reason. They could be trading it because of some momentum or some hype, or they've got some information which they think other people don't have about that project, and therefore they can trade it. They don't necessarily want to invest in the project. They have a specific in and out date or in and out price target to get out of that position. So a position trader trades over months. You then have somebody called a swing trader. Now, a swing trader is somebody who wants to go days to weeks. So their time frame is to be in a trade between days and weeks. So they can be in the trade for one day, two days, maybe the whole week. And that's their modus operandi, right? They like trading in that time frame and that's where they operate. You then have what you call a day trader. And this is probably what you hear a lot, right? You hear this everywhere. Everybody's a day trader. Well, a day trader is somebody who trades intraday. Right. So generally, they don't want to keep any overnight positions. They want to be in and out of the market within that 24 hour period. And therefore, they classify themselves as a day trader. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean they need to trade all day. No, they can trade, you know, for three, four hours. They're still classed as a day trader. And then your fastest form of trading is what you're calling a scalp trader. And again, you may have heard about this before. A scalp trader is somebody who's trading, trading between seconds to minutes. OK, seconds to minutes on a scalp trader. So there, there you've got it. You've got your investors who are long term conviction. You have then got your traders. And within there, you've got all these different types of traders. And if you want to trade, 
you can identify which one are you. And again, if you want to go through that, go work through my course, ijaz.uk forward slash is completely free. I'm not charging for my course. Loads of traders out there charging thousands of thousand dollars. That's not what we're doing here. It's free. Go learn it. And we talk about the different time frames that you can trade on. Now, generally, as a rule of thumb, if you're new to trading, you want to start on higher time frames. Right? If somebody came to me and they said, oh, it's my first 10, 15, 20 trades, should I be trading as a scalp trader? I say, are you crazy? Right? You should be trying to trade as a swing trader, which is where you're keeping your positions for a couple of days. Because all the tactics you're using, and again, we go through them in the talk TA course, whether you're using Bollinger Bands, whether you're using EMA Ribbon, whether you're using Moving Averages or Candlesticks, it's far easier to spot those on daily charts and four hourly charts, i.e. longer time frames, because it gives you time to think. And particularly as somebody new, if you're trying to trade on a five minute candle chart and the candle is just printing very fast, you're going to panic, you're going to make mistakes, you're going to get your stop loss wrong, you're going to get your take profit long, wrong, take profit wrong, and it's going to become very difficult for you to learn how to trade consistently profitably. So again, if you're starting out new in trading, two things I'd say, trade with some lunch money or do what I did, which is start out with a paper trading account, right? A lot of platforms offer this, whether it's on TradingView, where there's uh, some of the exchanges as well, they will let you trade with paper money, with fake money using a demo account. What a great way to learn, right? Practice with that. But as soon as you can, do move over to some real money because there's a real difference. I remember I was doing paper trading for a very long time. This is when I was really young, right? I started like a, when I was really, really young at school. And as soon as I put it onto real money, even though it was just a bit of lunch money, right? It was so different. Your emotions play differently. Your psychology plays differently. And therefore, it's really important. As soon as you can afford to do so, once you've done some paper trading and you're kind of getting a hang of it, you're not completely new, start playing with a little bit of lunch money so you can activate the neurons that activate when it's real money. Because your brain plays differently. When it's paper money, oh yeah, you're, you're gangster, right? You know what you're doing. You're playing the trades. Your emotions aren't getting in the way. As soon as you put a bit of real money, suddenly you're making irrational decisions. And it's all because it's money on the line. So definitely get money in when you're ready to do so. Okay, so investor, trader, which one are you gonna do? Right, which one are you gonna do? Well, first and foremost, I've got to be blunt here, not everybody is built up to be a trader for a few reasons. One, you may not have the the makeup to deal with pressure, right? You might not be able to deal with pressure. The, the speed might be too much. The managing of your psychology might be too much. You may not have the patience. This is another thing, like to become a very good trader, You've got to be systematically documenting everything. You've got to place a trade. You've got to have a stop loss. You've got to take profit. You've got to record it in a diary. Oh, I made this mistake on this day. I'm not going to make that same mistake again. Like, it's not as exciting as people want you to think on YouTube, which is where, oh, you wake up in the morning, you get your coffee, you place two trades. Oh, look, I've made 10 grand. Off we go. No. For those people to get to that level, it's 10 years of doing what I said, journaling, going through all their trades. Like, it's not easy. It takes time. But you can do it and you certainly can get to a point where you can make a hundred dollars a day two hundred dollars a day and that for a lot of people that's life-changing and you could do that through going through that play plan walking through the ta course learning all the different technical analysis coming up with a trading strategy and delivering on it right and getting better and better progressively one percent each day improving over time now for an investor i think anybody can and should be an investor if you're not an investor in your life you're basically going backwards. There's no such thing as standing still. You're either growing your wealth or it's declining. Why? Because of inflation. And never has this been more pertinent than it has been today. Inflation is horrible right now. And if you're not investing your money, if you're not getting at least, and I know here in the UK, it's around 10%, right? Uh, 10, and obviously these numbers lie. So really, what is the actual real inflation? Maybe it's more, 15, 20%. Who knows per annum? So if you're not actually getting a return on your money, which is becoming harder and harder to do, your wealth is diminishing. So you cannot afford to not be an investor. And this is the structure I use. Let's jump back into the iPad and see what structure am I using uh, to kind of think about how I invest uh, my net worth. So the first thing to understand when you're investing is you want to build out your portfolio. And again, people who are being unprofessional, they kind of don't think about a portfolio, right? They won't sit there and think of their wealth as a portfolio. It sounds too professional for them to do, but that's the mistake. You've got to be able to draw out what is your portfolio of assets. And in here, maybe all the things you do, maybe you have a business, maybe you own, I don't know, a dentist, maybe you own some real estate, maybe you own some stocks, maybe you do all kinds of different things that you want to build investments into. Maybe you're not started yet, but you have a plan to do so. Now, within there, whatever that is personal to you, right, based on what you want to invest in, people may have stocks, they may have real estate, they may have all different things of stocks real estate. What I then did when I wanted to start with crypto is I carved out a little position in my portfolio. 
And this position can be anywhere between 1% to 5%. Now, if you're very scared of risk, of course, start at 1% and put that into crypto, right? Put that into crypto as 1% to say, you know what? As if, if nothing comes of crypto, if I was completely wrong in crypto, it's 1% of my portfolio, right? If I'm worth 100 grand, I've lost a grand, right? If I'm worth 10 grand, I've lost 100 quid. Big deal. But if crypto was to be right, and if crypto was to grow exponentially as many people are projecting, at least I put 1% in there. So I'm insured against that risk. That's why 1% is such a beautiful level. And this is where it gets interesting because we've I made videos on this before, which is where if every single millionaire out there wanted to hold some Bitcoin, they can't hold one Bitcoin. So you imagine that if every millionaire out there for some reason sits with their financial advisor or just thinks about it themselves and go, you know what, I'm a multi multi millionaire. And if I just want to buy one Bitcoin to just hedge against the possibility that I'm wrong about crypto and crypto explodes and becomes the next big thing and destroys traditional finance, right? Why would you not put 1% of your net worth into it? Well, guess what? They can't. And this is why speed matters as well. So very important that we understand that is that 1%. Now, if you're a bit more risky and you like crypto, then of course you can work your way as you build kind of conviction and knowledge about the space up to 5%. Now, of course, I'm much more than 5% because I'm very over-indexed on crypto, but it doesn't mean I've neglected stocks, real estate, commodities, and any other assets as well. I do make sure I've got other stuff in here, including things like startup investments, right? You might have startups in here as well. You may have other investments. You may do angel investing. There might be other things that you're doing in your portfolio and you've got to decide what is that small bit that is crypto. And again, if you're new to it, think about this 1% rule just as insurance. Are you re is it really going to damage your financial position if you put 1% in crypto? That's the way I'd architect it. Okay. So now you want to ask yourself, okay, let's take this 1% and let's draw this out now into our circle of crypto. And in this space now, what do I want to trade with? And what do I want to invest? Two different things. We've just discussed it and broken down that they're two very different things. So again, you want to carve a portfolio, which is where you decide how much you want to trade with and what do you want to invest in. Now, a nice rule of thumb for this is the investment portfolio should be much bigger than your trading portfolio, right? Trading, like we've just discussed, high risk, high reward. You've got to learn it over time. And therefore, the majority of this 1% that you want to put into crypto should be flowing straight into your long-term investments through something called a DCA, right? A dollar cost averaging. This is where you decide which crypto do you have the highest conviction in over a long time frame. Is it Bitcoin? Is it Ethereum? Is it certain layer one solutions? And you do your research and you come up with a list of one, two, three, four, maybe five, six different cryptos, who knows, maybe up to 10. And that is your long-term portfolio. We can go into a separate video where we build out portfolios. I'm also gonna work on a free course to get that out for you guys as well, because it's quite a complex topic about how to build the perfect crypto portfolio. And then you wanna set a DCA. And a DCA is just saying, hang on a second, instead of trying to time the market, instead of trying to find perfect times to buy into these cryptos, I'm just gonna have a schedule where I buy every Monday, every Friday, every Saturday morning. It doesn't matter whether the markets are up or down. I'm just gonna consistently put in $100 every week into crypto or whatever it equates to based on the percentages that we were just playing out there. And that is called dollar cost averaging. And what you hope to happen is after year after year after year, your portfolio is growing and growing and growing in size, okay? And that's important. Now within there, you're then gonna to wanna to say, what is that sliver that you want to put in as investing. And again, this is going to come down to your risk appetite. For many people, if particularly if your portfolio is very big, if we're talking big numbers, your investing is probably going to be 99%. I know it sounds crazy, but it's probably going to be 99% because even 1% here is going to be a crazy amount if you've got a big portfolio, right? If you've got 100 grand or you've got a million in all of crypto, then of course, you're sitting there with 1%, which is a lot in trading. Now, if you've got a smaller amount, if you're starting with about 10 grand, right, then your percentage in your trading account might have to be a little bit bigger. Because if you're trading with anything less than about $1,000, it starts to become a little bit difficult, right? Because remember, if you're trading on spot without leverage, and you get a percent, you want to make sure that you've got a decent amount to trade with. Otherwise, it's probably not gonna be worth your time if you're making $2 here and $2 there. Uh, again, I'm just speculating, maybe that is useful for you, in which case, of course, you can do that. But generally, as a rule of thumb, if you're trading with a 1000, then if you're making, you know, 10% uh, return on that, it's $100, right, which is what you're trying to want, you kind of want to use as a rough ballpark figure. 
So that's how you want to set this up. And again, this may even work its way up to 10%, depending on how seriously you want to take the trading aspect of it. But the important thing is, do not neglect this. Even if you love trading, do not neglect the investing part of your portfolio and vice versa. If you like investing, there's no reason you can't have a sliver of your portfolio, 1% of your crypto part of your portfolio to which you play around in some trades. It's going to teach you a lot of things. Even if you're inclined to be an investor, do some trading. It teaches you a lot about momentum. It teaches you a lot about indicators, about timing the market, about liquidity, about so many different things, which is going to help your long-term investing as well. So the two are very symbiotic in that they do help each other. If you, if you work on trading, it's going to help you investing. If you work on investing, it's going to help your trading. And the answer for me is always to do both. Maybe that's easy because I've always loved trading, but I, you know, I make sure I do more investing than I do trading. And I make sure that sliver of my trading portfolio is something I'm willing to lose. I'm willing to risk. It's very unlikely that I'm going to lose all of my trading account. And particularly once you become a little bit more experienced, the chance of you losing this whole red sliver here becomes very, very unlikely. But when you're new, maybe it's possible. Maybe you make some mistakes. You started off with $1,000 in your trading account. You put another nine in your investing account. You put 9K in your investing account. You started off about 1K in your trading account. And maybe you lose that 1K, right? Because you're learning how to trade. But it's your job to protect that 1K when you're trading. And we can go into a separate kind of chat about that, which is how do you protect it? And it all comes to something called risk to reward, R to R, your risk to reward ratio. You should never be risking all of your trading account in any one given trade. And there should only be a certain percentage that you do lose. And we will cover that off in a separate video. So there you have it, guys. That is the difference between investing and in trading. And it's important that not only do you understand the difference, but you're able to sit there and do the exercise, which I've just walked you through, which is if you want to take it seriously, you don't want to be this person that kind of just dabbles in crypto because your Uber driver spoke about it or your friend spoke about it. And you're just like, oh, I bought a little bit of crypto. Look, I'm a crypto investor. No, somebody who takes it seriously, they look at their portfolio. They look at all the assets they have in their life. And maybe you have none. I'm not judging you. But you look at it and you write it down and you look at the assets you have. Maybe it's a car, maybe it's a house, maybe it's whatever you have. Maybe you have investment in a startup, maybe you have some stocks, maybe you have some real estate, maybe you have some commodities. You might have something or maybe you have nothing. But you write it down and then you say, okay, that's where I'm at now. This is where I want my portfolio to be. And then when you draw that out, you go, okay, this is what I want to draw my portfolio as. And I want to invest 1% as a minimum into crypto. And of that 1%, I want to make sure that about 90, 95% is investing long-term investing, just kind of tuck it away like a badger, just putting it in his cave, just tuck it away, tuck it away, bury it under, bury it under. And then active trading is between one to 10% of my account, which hopefully will grow over time and I'll get better and better with it as I practice. So there you have it, guys. Hopefully that explains the difference. Because a lot of people just muddy the waters and people are saying, oh, well, look, I'm in crypto. No, there are different aspects of crypto. It's important to identify which one is which and never, I mean, never mix the two. And this is a critical mistake that I used to make a lot. So when I used to start trading, right, let's say I was trading Bitcoin, use it as Bitcoin as an example. I'd, I'd make this mistake all the time. I'd place a trade in Bitcoin, right? I'd have, my, I'd have my stop loss, I'd have my take profit. And let's say I was long Bitcoin and it starts going the other direction. Instead of selling at my stop loss, instead of letting the stop loss execute, I turn it off. I turn off the stop loss and I'd be like, yeah, I want to hold Bitcoin anyway. And so what I was doing there was not taking my L. I was not taking my L to say, hang on, I got this trade wrong. Now, long term, I want to invest in Bitcoin. So I wasn't wrong for saying, oh, I want to hold Bitcoin anyway. But what I was doing was I was taking a wrong trade because when I went into that position, it was a trade. I was supposed to get in and get out. And because the market moved against me, I said, oh, I wanted to hold it anyway. And just, I just left it there and put it into my spot account. That's, that's wrong. Do not mix the two. Your investments should be your investments. Your trading is very different. That's a job. That is when you sit down with no distractions. You have a stop loss. You have a reason you want to take the trade. Oh, I'm going to take this trade because it's a break of a symmetrical triangle. I'm going to take out this trade because the MACDs have crossed or we bounce from the bottom of the Bollinger Band and I'm taking this trade. Here's my take profit. If we move the wrong direction, I've got a stop loss, which is going to make sure I only lose 5% on this trade. That's it. There's no other way about it. You can't be like, oh, I'm going to turn my stop loss off and, and keep it as a spot position because I believe in Bitcoin long term. That's what I used to do. And that was a that was a cheating mentality I was doing. I was just cheating myself because if I didn't take the loss, it meant I didn't study it to say, oh, why did I get that wrong? OK, so very important that you do not mix the two. Look, you can you can do both. There's nobody that can say you can't do trading and you can't do investing. The easier one, the one that everybody should start with straight away because it takes no effort is investing. 
Take out that small bit of your portfolio that you're willing to lose, that 1%, that's not going to make a difference to your life, even if you lost it, and start tucking it away into your favorite high conviction cryptos. The rest, if you want to trade, practice on paper in demo accounts, and then work your way to some lunch money. And as you get more experience, it'll become obvious that you're ready to invest some more. Hopefully this was useful, guys. Slightly different videos to the ones normally on this channel. I'm aware that we talk a lot about the advanced stuff. And sometimes I just wanted to just come straight on camera and just talk about little bits that people gloss over that hopefully are relevant to you. Let me know in the comments if this type of video was useful. Let me know if there's some other topics that you're not quite sure about that you want me to cover in a similar manner as well. Hope you guys enjoyed. Smash all the likes. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the TA course, jars.uk forward slash TA, completely free. You tell me who else, what other trader with over a decade worth of experience in traditional finance is giving you their TA strategies for free. I'll, I'll save you the time. Nobody. Take advantage of it. Won't be free forever. And I'll see you in the next one.